The Raspberry Pi Zero and Zero Two are wonderful little devices that allow you to run some of your projects on a dedicated device without breaking the bank. At the time of making this video, the Raspberry Pi Zero Two W is only $15 at Micro Center. And don't let the scary command line worry you. I'll walk you through everything you need to know to get your device up and running in no time. Do note that this is not a headless setup. For the sake of keeping this video short, I won't go into the differences, but all you need to know is that this process will require a monitor and keyboard, as well as some adapters. See the description for a full list of supplies. First, we need to get our micro SD card ready. The Raspberry Pi doesn't come with any onboard storage, so we'll provide it. I'm using a 64 gigabyte card that I got at Micro Center for $5 and a simple USB card reader. Now, let's jump on our PC. You'll need to download the Raspberry Pi Imager on your PC. The link is on screen, and I will also leave the links in the description. Once you have the Imager installed, select the device you want to set up. In this case, I want to set up a Raspberry Pi 02W. Next, we'll choose the operating system. Here you have a few options. If you are wanting to use a Pi more like a desktop, you'll want to select the regular Desbian Bullseye install. However, I've found in my experience that the Pi Zero doesn't run the desktop interface very well. For this project, we are going to select the legacy version of Bullseye Lite. Lastly, we'll choose our storage. Make sure you select the correct storage device here. You don't want to accidentally overwrite something else that's important. Don't apply any settings yet, as we will do that after the device boots. The last thing we need to do to prepare the SD card is to enable SSH. We're not planning to use SSH in this tutorial, but I still highly recommend setting it up. Navigate to the link on screen and download the file called SSH. Copy the file to the root directory of your SD card and remove the card. Let's go work on the Pi. If you need to solder on header pins, this is a great method to hold your board still. Mine, as you can see, needs header pins soldered on. What you can do is place the header pins into a solderless breadboard, then you just hook your pie onto the pins upside down. Just to clarify, I have a set of pins here that I've pressed into the breadboard like so, long end down into the holes. Then I can simply turn the pie upside down and set it in place. Voila, it's ready to be soldered. My soldering skills leave something to be desired, so I'll spare you the pain of watching me get this in place. But if you need some tips on this part, there are lots of great videos out there. Looking at the Pi Zero, we have three ports. There's a micro USB dedicated to power supply, a micro USB we'll use for our keyboard, and a mini HDMI we'll use for our display. And here are the cables we need to do the job. Going back the other way, we have HDMI to mini HDMI, a USB female to micro USB male that we will use to connect the keyboard, and a USB male to micro USB male we'll use for power. Let's get all our adapters hooked up. Don't forget to put your SD card in. I like to use an external battery for the power supply. That way I don't have to mess with trying to reach a power outlet. Now let's boot it up. You'll see a few different notifications like this. Keep in mind that if you're setting up an original Pi Zero, this process will take a lot longer than the Pi Zero 2. The Zero 2 is significantly faster. We'll fast forward through the restart. Now we need to set our keyboard layout. This is especially important when it comes to creating our password as special characters will be mapped differently on different layouts. I'm in the United States, so I'm going to select English, US, and push enter. Then I'm going to scroll all the way up to the basic US layout and push enter again. Now it's time to create username and password. Don't lose these. Write them down or put them in your password manager. We're almost there. We just need to configure and update the Pi. Log in using the credentials you just created. Be aware that as you type the password, no text will appear. That's okay. Just type your full password and hit enter. To configure the Pi, let's run the onboard configuration utility. Type the text on screen into the command line to open the utility. The sudo prefix tells the system to run the command with administrative privileges. 
From here, we'll select System Options, followed by Wireless LAN. We'll find the US. The SSID is where you'll enter the name of your wireless network. Enter that, followed by your passphrase. Back on the Configuration menu, you'll want to select Localization Options, followed by Time Zone. For myself, I will select U.S. and Central Time. Now we can finish everything up with an update. Select Update from the Configuration menu. You'll notice you won't be able to select Finish by just scrolling down. You'll have to hit the Tab key on the keyboard. Once you've run the update from the Configuration menu, you'll want to run this last command. Make sure to use a capital Y when confirming the upgrade. That's it! Your Pi Zero 2W is all set up! So now what? I'll be following up with some fun projects to do on the Pi, so be on the lookout for those videos. Thanks for watching! If you found this video helpful, like and subscribe for more like it.